another day, um, I planned on painting today, uh, doors and fenders. Actually, I planned on painting them on Saturday. Today's Monday. <coughs> but I was uh, pretty low on paint. I'm not out of paint, pretty low on paint. I probably got just about a quart of this purple left. And I would guess that it's probably going to take me like a, I got less than a quart unmixed. I would say it's probably going to take me another quart at least on top of that. So probably just about two quarts unmixed would give me a little over three quarts mixed. I think that's probably what it's going to take to do the rest of these parts. Um, I don't want to use every last little drop of paint that I've got because I'm going to have to get some more mixed up because I'm not mixing this color up myself because it is ungodly expensive for me to mix it up myself. It's cheaper for me to go buy it. So I don't want to run myself right out because I want to be able to add a little bit, add what I buy to what I have, mix them together just to help in case that the dude that mix it up puts a little extra drop of blue in it or a drop of red in it and the shades off a little bit. Well, if I can mix it with the existing color, hopefully even if the color is off, then it's not too bad. So that's the plan. I've done it before and it works for um, So I thought maybe this morning I'd be going in and getting some paint, but uh, it is, well, they got the forecast right for a change, the weather dudes. Imagine that. It is colder than a witch's green kitty outside, and I ain't joking. And it's probably, I don't know if it's died down yet, but so far all morning it has been windier out than my tail feathers after a burrito buffet. And that's pretty breezy. Um, so I just don't like paint when it's that cold. My paint booth draws the ambient air, we'll call it. Just the shop air. I have a, a like an air makeup unit, but it's not hooked up. I never have bothered to hook it up. Because the furnace and stuff keeps up with the booths all right. I've slowed the fan down so it's not a whirlwind running through there. But still, on a day like today when it's cold and windy out, it's it's hanging everybody's tongue out to work. The furnace doesn't shut off. Um, yeah, it's I, I wind up getting big jeezly icicles hanging off the exhaust and sometimes it even starts to kind of plug up a little bit because you're pumping so much heat out that it gets frosty. Blah, 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 blah. So I don't think I'm going to be painting today either, which kind of, I was really hoping to get rid of this car this week. Um, have the doors and fenders painted on the weekend, then today I would be moving along with the hood and the trunk lid and hopefully hanging doors and stepping my way up to get rid of this turkey this week. But, Probably not going to happen, right? Kind of Get up there, have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, there you go. Okay, geez, got to be comfy. Make yourself comfortable. So, uh, <clears throat> I guess what I'm going to do then is I'll carry on. I got a, the fender and the doors, they're 320. They need a little more action. And then uh, we're going to have to uh, work the cock a little bit there. Seam sealer, I mean. On the edges, on the seams. Very, very safe. Very safe. Hey, pay attention, look at the camera. Hard to find good help. So, anyways, I'll do a little more sanding. I got one more fender left to do. Get that done. Then, uh, whoop, flip the doors up. Do the thing. Do the stuff. Very, very safe. All right. Well, so might as well get out of it, I guess, eh? Here, let me show you what it's like outside. Let me just show you, just, just so you get it. You know what I'm saying? Like it is, I don't like that. That's a bummer. Whew. Close that door. So yeah, we're gonna do stuff inside. We'll play inside today.
So we're gonna do some seam sealing here now. Yeah, I'll show you some stuff. Let's go look at some stuff. Hey, let's go look at some stuff. So I taped him up a little bit. Tried to get a nicer thing on the dealio. We got all kinds of shapes like this here. I generally like, I'll just run remain tape to follow the edge and then I'll go <laughs> with some little bits to make your little your little curves and all your little stupid shits in there. Um, usually just on this rear edge of the door, you can see the latch, this is the rear edge of the door. I'll get that particular with it. I don't get that particular on the front edge because by the time you got two hinges in there and stuff, I mean, you don't really, you don't really see that anyways. So I got both them done. Um, so the fenders, they get a little bit of sealer in these joints here. Um, I don't tape that out because once you start getting up into there, it gets a little complicated in there. So you can't really have a nice cut line here and then just have it look like just a great big pile of dog shit up there. So I'd rather have the whole thing look like a pile of dog shit versus some dog shit going into, you know, a, a geographical oddity, I guess. I don't know. Here's a weird thing that I was just noticing that I didn't really notice before. These two fenders are both 67. No marker, no, no markers, none filled, no nothings. Um, I don't think 68 had markers. Maybe they did. I don't know. I don't think so, though. Somebody else would know better than me. But anyways, so these are, to my knowledge, both dart fenders. But they're very different. This one has a little pyramid, and the Himalayas there, pair of them, you know, the... I don't know what the hell they are, if they're for accident shit or something. I don't know. This one, no pyramids. Uh, this one, this whole piece up here really has got different lines all through it. As well as this fender has a hole here, right? This fender, no hole. And this area, is all a completely different shape. See that hole and the bump there? Negative. And even the way all this shit's overlapped here is different. Like that one doesn't got near to the action that this one has. I don't know. Like I said, from what I know, they're both 67 fenders. I don't know, whatever. Just a weird thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to... Uh, Jerky around here a little bit, and then uh, hoi, yeah. uh, we're gonna work some cock on the doors. Where should I put you? What do you think? Down here? What do you think about that? Down there? Hey, okay. how's that? What do you think? Huh? No, oh, okay. All right. So, uh, I was talking a while ago about my paint situation. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Just taping that up to keep it fresh, you know? Sometimes it don't work. But anyways, I bought my paint situation and not having enough to want to, uh, ooh, look at work. Not having enough paint to, uh, Um, not having enough color in my possession to finish all these parts and not wanting to use up all the color that I have until I get more, etc, etc. So I phoned the place that I get my paint from and I ordered some more paint and then they phoned me back and said that uh, there's one of the toners in the paint that doesn't affect the shade or the color um, but it's like a, it's like a flop adjuster or something. I, you know, I, I couldn't really explain exactly what those kind of things do. It, it kind of tones the metallics down a little bit. 
like flattens them out a little bit, muds them out a little bit. But uh, apparently they don't have any more, and the dude mixing the paint before me didn't know they didn't have any more, started mixing the paint, and they have to special order this shit from across the other side of the country. Now here in Canada, I can order shit from, I'm in Alberta, I can order shit off a of Rock Auto that comes from, I don't know, Tennessee? Something like that? Louisa, I don't know where the hell it comes from. I mean, hell a long ways away. I can have it here in two days. I can order shit from three hours away from here and it'll take a week and a half to get here. Such is the case with the paint. It's going to take a while. It'll be probably about three to four days for them to get the toner that they need. So, uh, yeah, so it's going to have to be crafty. So what I'm going to have to do then is uh, the color should be 95%, we'll say. But you can't panel paint these panels at 95% and hang them on the car because it might have only 50%. So what I'm going to have to do is, uh, like I said, the color is going to be really wicked close. So uh, I'm going to paint these parts. And then since the carcass of the car is already painted, <clears throat> when I got these parts covered, I'll take at the back edge of the doors, or I clear it, and I'll take some of the old paint that I still have left over, and I'll blend it forward into the doors. See what I'm saying? So the back foot of the door will be that original color, and I'll blend forward. And then uh, I guess since the cowl is painted, I will blend a little bit on the top of the fender. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing. Anyways, on the top of the fender, I'll blend a little bit. And then most likely the back edge of the hood, I'll blend a little bit forward of the good color into the wrong color. And then uh, the trunk lid, I will just do, I know I have enough of my color to do the trunk lid completely. Uh, but that's why you don't ever run yourself right dry. Because if you run yourself right dry and you depend on somebody else, they are going to stuff it right up your ass for you when you're not even looking. So, and I, and that's just, that's the way the cookie goes. So anyways, here, maybe you want to, watch me get my fingers dirty. It's awesome. I'll show you just how unglamorous this situation actually is. What do you think all this motion, hey? What do you think of that? Hey? Woo! Boop, boop. You know, I think at least at this angle, you won't have to look at my ugly mug here. Anyways. Again, with the urethane. If I was going to be painting these things the same day, I wouldn't want to use a urethane sealer on it um, because it won't be dry enough. But I won't be painting these till tomorrow at the earliest. So, try to go kind of even with it as you're putting her down. We're going to give her the finger here when we're done, anyways, but you don't want too much. And you're just wasting it, you know, if you pump too much on here. Little dab in the corners. Oh, yeah. Then you can kind of make a run for it along the bottom. Just act like a Mexican in a big fence. Just make a run for it. Actually, I'm glad you can't see this because it looks like shit. But it's the bottom of It's messy. Concentrate.
the silence of concentration. Eh? That's that's actually that's that's that was the goofing in the corner. Now, if you hold your finger just right, you'll make sure to get it packed right up underneath your fingernail. So that's awesome. Again, you can make another run for it on the bottom because who gives a shit? Little oh, finger doodling, dilly doodly. Tiny old neighbor, dilly doodly. Shut the hell up. Oh yeah, there's business. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now this is where it all goes for shit on you, on me. Hmm. I always keep a little flat blade screwdriver in my pocket. It uh, really comes in handy. Kind of try to pull your tape up. I mean, you're going to get whatever the hell you want to call that kind of an edge on it. How are we doing so far? What do you think? Oh, close one. Of course, some of this gets a little carried away on you with the stretching of it or whatever you want to call it, I don't know, the edge, where the edge gets a little too discombobulated on you. What I do, and you don't got to do this, you can do whatever the hell you want to do, I don't give a shit what you do, but what I do, this seems to work for me not too bad, is uh, after this stuff sets for probably 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Sometimes you can go by with your finger as after it skins over and you can kind of flatten that stuff down a little bit, you know, calm it down a little because you got too big of an edge on there. It's too edgy. You don't want it to be that edgy. Yeah, there you go. That's me working the cock. <coughs>
<laughs> right now on the radio, old Stevie Wonder singing "Duty Wop." Duty Wop. Here, uh, I'm gonna show you how I mount these doors to paint them. So uh, I'm gonna pause you for a minute. I'm gonna pause you for a minute. I'm gonna be back. So here's something. <clears throat> See that? I think you can imagine what that is. I have a couple engine stands that I don't put engines on. So what I do is I come up with a bunch of nuts, bolts, ready rod, etc. Bolt her to the door. Then I can paint the door. See, I like to paint the panels. Or There, take that. I like to paint the panels the way that they're going to be on the car. Um, so I like to paint the doors vertical, horizontal. I don't know. I don't lay them flat. I don't ever lay them flat. I want them hanging the way they're going to be on the car. Um, with metallics, so then you make sure that your metallics lay all the same because they will lay different on a flat surface than on a side. And uh, when it comes to putting on the clear coat or you know in any of the paints, this way the texture that you're going to get is going to be the same throughout the side of the car. Because if you lay a door flat and you put the clear on it, well inevitably you're going to take the lid off the can of clear and just pour it on the door so it's nice and flat and shiny, right? Well, you can't do that on the side of the car with coat of peel. So then the coat of peel has a little bit of texture, an orange peel in the clear, unless you color sand it. But then your door does not. So then they don't, it's, it ain't the same, it don't look right. So this way, uh, you're going to have the same texture carried on throughout the side of the car. That's what, that's how I do and, and that's, and I can do whatever the hell I want to do, so never mind. So anyways, what I'll do now is, uh, oh, I won't do that. Now what I'll do is I'll struggle to hang the door. On that. It's gonna be a hoop. You're really gonna like it. I bet you thought these vice grips were three different colors for no reason. There's a reason for everything. Stepping in here. I also have, but I won't be able to use them in this instance. Um, I made a set of T stands for these same engine stands that come up in here and T out. And then I can take it, I can lay hang a fender on them. And then it puts the fender right here, right up, right up where you want it. So, uh, yeah, anyways, that, that's. Uh, that's about it for this. I, uh, I'm going to carry on, melt the other door to the other one, 
fenders, and then uh, I still ain't painting them today because I don't got no damn paint now, do I? But uh, yeah, that's it. I guess uh, that's it for this one. See you later. Arrivederci. Hasta la vista. And shit.